Wyndham Hamilton Park Hotel. It's Inside the Jets. Brought to you by EY, building a better working world. And by MT Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. Now, here's Eric Allen and Eric Coleman. Welcome to Inside the Jets. We are broadcasting live from Vanderbilt Sports and Spirits inside the Wyndham Hamilton Park Hotel. Eric Allen alongside Eric Coleman and we have a special guest to start off that is Jet Safety Terrence Brooks our player guest segment is presented by M&T Bank the official community bank of your New York Jets so T Brooks how good did it feel to go to that locker room in Buffalo as a winner? The losing streak comes to an end in Orchard Park. Man, it felt great. Um, we have been struggling for a little while. We just couldn't pull out at the end of the games. Um, but to go out there as a team and finish in all phases, uh, special teams played great. Defense, man, they stuck in there when they had two. Offense looked great. Um, I feel like we owed them one, man. So we weren't going out there and leaving without a win. Uh, can we talk about... The, the special teams, because they've been lights out all season. Uh, had a, another great game uh, yesterday. Yeah. I know they had some big returns, blocked field goal. Can you talk about what you guys have done as a group, uh, as a special teams unit? Um, we just stuck together. That's the biggest thing. Um, my coach, Coach Boyer, he's always preaching, hey, man, stay together. He tells us that after every meeting, every day. So that's basically what we did. We go into practice with a mindset that we want to be number one in the league. And um, we try to make sure that happens. Um, we, we have great coaching. It's only just up to us to go out there and execute the game plans. And um, it's been going well for us. We got a lot of guys who go out there who are hungry. They want to play. Um, we got Roberts back there who's phenomenal. I mean, we couldn't ask for someone better. But, man, it just, it's been coming together. We're just trying to finish strong throughout the year. And, I mean, nobody's going to win games for us. So we're trying to, even on special teams, we're trying to find a way to win the game for us. So it, it's been going great. I can't complain. Terrence, you've be, become a core special teamer mm -hmm. for Brant Boyer and company. When people hear about special teams, mm -hmm. how many units are you actually on? Oh, man. Well, I'm on all four. We yep. have a kickoff, kickoff return, punt, and punt return. So I'm doing all those and a little bit of field goal block, too. So, I mean, it, it feels great to be a guy that they can trust to go on all four phases and go out there and contribute. And um, I'm just trying to go out there and play my best game each and every time. And whenever somebody sees me on film for the first time, I want them to say, hey, man, that kid can play. He gets out there. Can you talk about how difficult it is to block on kickoff return. Oh, I know we know you play safety, and that's oh, kind of natural man. to you. That's your natural position. You've sure. been doing that your whole career. But yes. going uh, from running full speed backwards, having to turn around and block someone. And you yeah. can't do the wedge anymore. Oh, my goodness. It's, 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 a lot, it's a lot harder than people think, man. I'm usually the one who's aggressive and want to go do the hitting. But when you got to go, go out there and stop someone running full speed with a, about a 30-yard head start at you, it gets a little tough. But... Man, that, that right there separates the men from the boys. Um, just like on kickoff, you got to go down and do the same thing to them. But it, it's very difficult. But, I mean, that's, that's what our coaches train us for through the training, I mean, training camps and all that stuff like that, the hard work we put in. And sometimes it just comes down to mentality thing. What makes Andre Roberts such a special returner? Because he's doing things I haven't seen in a league for a long time. And I said yesterday, it's a travesty if he is not a pro bowler oh, this man. year. I mean, he definitely deserves it. The kid, his vision is phenomenal. I mean, he finds those creases and he hits them fast and he makes them pay, man. But all it, I guess it starts up front, too. We got to go out there and make sure that we're carrying our blocks and execute for him. And, man, he finds it. And even when it's not there, he, he turns and he grinds for those extra yards. And that's what we need in the return, and that's why we love him so much. You call him a kid. He's in his ninth season. I mean, hey, he still <laughs> runs like one, man. He's got that energy. So, hey, I'm never going to call him old, man. He's seasoned vet, man, but he knows exactly what he's doing. And he, he's never slowing down, man. The kids keep going every week, so I love it. And can you talk about the in the secondary, that group, uh, New Jack City? You yeah. know, it seems like a, a, a very close-knit group. Sure. You all seem to, to hang out with each other on and off the field. Can you talk about the importance of that chemistry? Um, it's definitely important. We got a lot of young guys in that room, um, and it's good to go to work with them every day. There's a lot of energy in that room. It's a lot of guys who are hungry and wants to get better. And um, we couldn't ask for anything more. Our coach definitely holds us to a high standard, and going through those tough times through training camp and going through all the adversity we have throughout the season, it's been great to be with a group of guys who have to keep that clear mindset throughout the year. And um, the, like I said, the energy is just always there. Jamal provides that. Obviously, he's the one who does all the talking for us. But, um, man, it, it, it's been great to be with those group of guys. And um, I came from a, uh, some great groups back in Baltimore and Philly. And uh, just to get around some younger guys like myself, man, it's, it's awesome to see that energy and feel that each and every day. 
Inside the Jets is supported by Selective Insurance. Response is everything. Eric Allen and Eric Coleman here at Vanderbilt's Sports and Spirits inside the Wyndham Hamilton Park Hotel. Terrence Brooks is with us right now. We're going to have Robbie Anderson, one of yesterday's heroes, momentarily as well. But Terrence, I know it's got to be encouraging for you guys defensively that the takeaways are starting to come again. Three takeaways against the Buffalo Bills, including two from Tremaine Johnson, who now has three over the course of the last two weeks. <laughs> there we go. I mean, it's great. Um, getting interceptions and turnovers is already hard enough in the league, but when you can come away with three of them, man, that's awesome. Um, Tremaine's a guy who works hard at practice, man. He gets after it, and he's a guy that we can look up to because he's obviously a guy that who is respected in this league, so we can kind of model ourselves after him in that sense. But um, he came up big for us, man, and it's good to get him going again. Can you talk about, uh, listen, you're a safety. Mm -hmm. Your head coach is a safety. Yeah. You know, you have D coordinator, position coach. All those guys teaching you, what are some of the lessons you learned from Coach Bowles at playing the safety position? Oh, man, it's just, it, like I said, it's a mentality thing. you got to have that plan in that position. you got to be a commander on that field. But honestly, what I love about Coach Bowles is he teach you, he's not just teaching you football. He teaches you a lot of things about life and how to be a man and how, about, how to go about your business just with everything that you do. And um, I've learned a lot from him just as a man, how I should treat myself in my life and treat my family and do things like that. But, man, he's a great man all around. But, um, you know, you're definitely going to get a little bit more hard work and a little bit more yelling when you got a coach who's played safety. So it, it's, it, it gets there. It gets there. <laughs> so, so, so going through the, the losing streak, uh, all the tough things that are going on, sure. obviously you're in the locker room, but you hear some of the things that go on. Mm -hmm. Does that motivate you as a, as a player to go out there and fight hard for your coach? Oh, for sure, man. We know he deals with a lot of stuff. Just being in New York, you're going to get a lot of scrutiny when, when things aren't going great. When things are going well, people are kind of with you and on the bandwagon. But... He, he's never changed, man. His mindset to come to work every day, every day and produce, I mean, you couldn't want more of a coach, man. He keeps calm. His, his attitude is always level with us. And um, he expects a lot of us. And that's what you want as a coach. You want somebody who's going to push you, not somebody who's going to baby, baby you and just let you think moral victories are, are okay. He goes out there and he makes sure that we know what we're doing wrong and what we're doing right, and he wants to execute every week. And, I mean, I love that man for that. T. Brooks, what does it say about this team – playing the Buffalo Bills Sunday, six-game losing streak, a team who came into your house, dictated everything on their terms, won the battles everywhere, 41-10. to 10. And the previous week, you guys had just played Tennessee, and it was a game you all thought to a man you let slip away. And here you go. You find yourself again behind and I think a lot of teams mm -hmm. who didn't, who wouldn't have had that character that you guys showed, would have packed it in. Yeah. Would have said, "Hey, listen, our season's over. We're not going to the playoffs. We got nothing to play for." But what did it say about what's inside that locker room? The way you guys rallied together. I mean, you just see a team with a lot of heart. You see a team that that's not going to lay down just because the season is bad. There's a lot of guys who are out there and. People always say you have nothing left to play for when you know, when you don't make the playoffs, and I just think that's a bad thing for to show well to put on NFL players. Man, we have our families to play for, ourselves, our legacy, the respect. There's a lot of things that's in this game that you keep playing for, and the crazy thing is nobody's gonna go out there and get wins for you. I mean, nobody. It's already hard enough to win a game in the NFL, but nobody's gonna just give you a game. So if you can, you can, you don't want to go out there and just embarrass yourself anymore by laying down in front of a team and letting them win. We're going to go out there and fight each and every week, every practice. I mean, every day we're trying to get better in some sense. So we owe them one, man. It's a respect thing at the end of the day. We got to go out there and get it. Now, you know I got to talk about your quarterback. You know, having Sam Darnold, rookie quarterback in there, fighting his butt off through his injuries. What have you seen from this young quarterback throughout the season with the, as far as his growth? I, I'm very proud of him, man. He's got that vet mentality. Um, I kind of seen that when I was in Philadelphia with Carson Wentz. They, they just have this, I don't know, it's just this aura about themselves that – they mean business. They're coming to work to get better. They're coming to work to be that type of leader. And from day one, when he stepped in, man, it was good to get him back on the field and just, just I mean, just get to work. I mean, that guy, he leads by example, and that's what you like. You don't want – sometimes you want somebody who talks a little bit more, just has a little bit more, like, I guess, shows their confidence a little bit more. But that – I mean, when he steps on the field, gets between those white lines, I mean, he's all business and he shows it. What was it like on that sideline? Fourth and one. You guys are trailing 23 to 20. Todd Bowles has a decision to make there. You could try to kick the field goal or go for the win and then put it in your hands, the defense's hands, to hold. Man, it was great. I mean, I, I, 
in my mind, I was telling them, let's go for it. I want to go get the win. I want to be aggressive, and I'm glad they did go for it. Um, but that just shows a lot of confidence that he has in us, has in um, and Sam and his defense. And, um, man, it was great. I had my head down the whole time. I did you really? You didn't look? You really man, didn't look? I didn't look at all. I was down there praying, trying to get this win, man. But they pulled it out, man. It was great execution by Sam through that last drive. And defense came away. And like you said, Tremaine had a big stop and sealed the game, man. It, it was a beautiful thing. And as soon as that happened, man, we just, I don't know, kind of like a weight lifted off our shoulders. What do you think it was like for the defense yesterday? I know primarily you're getting the snaps on special teams right now, obviously a valuable yeah. reserve defensively, because D. Roberts, who we'll talk about in a second, Daryl Roberts has taken over that starting role sure. with Marcus May being out. Mm -hmm. But the challenge Josh Allen provided, especially when you're playing man back there, yeah, yeah. What, have you seen a guy you can compare him to? And then also... How were you guys able to make some adjustments in the second half and neutralize him, especially in the ground? Oh, man, it, just just watching in and looking in on that man, that kid's a dynamic runner. I mean, he, he can get out there. The kid, I mean, he throws the ball easily 80 yards, I mean, with no effort. So so playing that deep ball and making sure that we were on our P's and Q's coverage-wise was big against him. But, I mean, when he's not throwing the ball, he uses his feet, and he's very strong with that. He actually showed that a lot in the game, and it was kind of tough getting him in those third down situations and he breaks out for a big run and gets the first down. And that's kind of, I guess, depleting to a defense. But, for man, we got it together. Those guys went out there and just just, just buckled down and really got things handled. But um, there's not too much I can say more about them, man. I, I really rather talk about our defense, how we stopped them. That's playing. right. You yeah. guys do. Yeah. That's my thing. You neutralize them in yeah, the second Yeah, definitely. Half. But, I mean, we needed that. If we didn't, I mean, obviously we wouldn't have won the game. But, yeah. I mean, the, the guy's great. All respect to him. He played a great game. And, um. Man, he's going to have a bright future. Now, I don't know if you got to watch the film on the Texans, but they're, they're, they're a solid. They're having a great year. For sure. They have a, you know, obviously their defense is stacked with all kinds of ball players. Yeah. Quarterback, Deshaun Watson. Can you talk about some of the, the, the things that they bring against you? I mean, we pretty much might face the same type of challenge. Um, you got DeAndre Hopkins over there who's a, I mean, dynamic receiver. I mean, the kid can catch anything in his radius pretty much. And, um, I mean, they're just explosive. So you got to be on your P's and Q's up front. Uh, linebackers, secondary, we all got to be really up tight. I mean, really tight with that communication. Make sure that we're all we're all on point, man. And that should take care of itself. But it's usually more about what we do and what we what we can control. And um, I feel like we handle that. I feel it would be fine. What changes for you in terms of preparation now that you have a Saturday game? <sighs> man, each week you should be studying even more. You should be going even harder. So that's that's really the standard of what we're going by. Um, but, I mean, you just got to watch film, man. Watch film on them, try to dissect them as much as you can, um, figure out what you need to do game plan-wise to stop them, and, I mean, execute. That's, that's the biggest thing. A lot of guys can go into the game plan and say they're going to do this and that, but if you don't execute, man, it, it's all down for me. Now, now, you talked earlier about communication, for sure. the importance of communication. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it when you're playing at home at MetLife, the crowd is screaming, yeah. you can't hear the guy next to you. What kind of adjustments do you have to make in a home game to communicate with one another? Oh, man, you, I feel like it comes through practice. You kind of get that feel of that chemistry, what you're going to do, and um, you're ahead of all motions, ahead of all formations. and that It just seems like you get a sense of what each other is going to do. But um, communication, man, you got to do everything possible, whether it's yelling to the top of your lungs, to hand signals, to whatever you got to do to get that communication right so you can make that play. Um, for the most part, I mean, those guys do a great job of that. Our coach prepares us very well. And um, it's usually never a problem, man. It's going well. How would you describe your career today, Cliff Notes version, coming out of Florida State, <laughs> starting off with the yeah. Baltimore Ravens, then coming over to Philadelphia, and now you've landed here with the Jets? Yes. Um, I mean, it's definitely been up and down. There's some things that, I mean, I wouldn't change anything. It, it definitely, the NFL is definitely a crazy business. You never know what's going to happen. But, I mean, I'm happy with, with what I'm doing now, but I always want to get better. I always want to improve my career and just keep going higher, man. Um, getting drafted was definitely a big blessing. I mean, I, I thank God for that one. Um, spent a couple of years in Baltimore. It went well. Um, had an opportunity to go to Philadelphia right before they won the Super Bowl. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> but, I mean, like I said, everything happens for a reason, man. I, I couldn't be more happier being here in New York and getting this opportunity. And um, I'm just, just making the most out of it, man. I'm controlling what I can control and just, just balling. Trying Let, to let's talk a little bit about something you're doing when you're not balling, and that is 
you're, you have an internship with the yeah. Players Tribune. Yeah. Can you tell us what you're doing? Um, right now I'm over there. We're just working on editing, trying to figure out what my niche is in the photography game, and um, just finding something that I'm interested in outside of football. It's, a, it's something that kind of gives me like a peace outside. Um, I have my son who's four-year-old, so kind of brought me into that field of t doing the photography and doing things with him. But, um, man, I just love it. It just it helps me, I mean, just kind of get away, try to get that breath and – I mean, it's going great. I mean, New York is a great city to go shoot and take pictures at anyway. So it's an awesome experience, man. And um, they're more than welcoming over there. They, they are awesome. They welcome me with welcome arms. And, man, it's, it's great. Where are some of your favorite spots to shoot? Oh, Dumbo Park is one of my favorite yeah? spots, man. I love that. Uh, the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. I mean, those are two of the main spots. But um, really just any type of street photography, just get out on the street, out in the middle of all the chaos and what's going on. And, it's really just taking a moment. So I'm from the country, so, and we have about four stoplights in my hometown. You're so from Florida. From Florida, a real small town. Um, they actually shot a, a scary movie called Jeepers Creepers in my hometown. So <laughs> okay. that, shows, that shows you how much it's Denellen, there. right? Yeah, Denellen, Florida. Yep. Denellen, Florida. So, man, it's definitely new being up here in the big city. Man, I'm always in awe when I go down to Times Square. I'm always looking up and all. But, I mean, it's an awesome experience. I wouldn't take it back for nothing. What can you tell us about your four-year-old son? <sighs> Wild. <laughs> What's his name? What is he involved in? His name, his name is Carter Brooks. Um, he's already a great baseball player. I mean, I'm not even – he's not on a tee or anything. I'm pitching overhand to him, and he's cracking him. Um, he wakes up about 7 o'clock in the morning. He's on 100 miles an hour. And he wants chocolate milk as soon as he gets up. <laughs> um, but, man, I, I love that kid. He gives me he gives me my why of why I'm doing this. He gives me my why of why I'm going to practice every day, running these sprints and training as hard as I am. Um, I want to do everything for him, and we're also expecting twins on the way. So oh my God! Well, you listen. You're yeah, doing good things, the Players <laughs> Tribune. Yeah. You're a valuable part of the New York Jets. But I'll tell you what, you also have a future in this industry if you ever want to hey, become part of it. Let because me know. Let me know. So well spoken, and so many different stories, so many different angles that you can talk to us about. I wish we had more time, and you were here prompt and early. There we go, Terrence Brooks. Okay. On time, delivering. We'll come right back with another guy who delivers, Robbie Anderson. Hey. You're listening to and watching Inside the Jets. Ernst & Young LLP is proud to be the exclusive professional business and accounting services sponsor of the New York Jets and MetLife Stadium. Teaming with them as the official sponsor of the EY Coaches Club. As a global leader in assurance, tax, transaction, and advisory services, the global network of EY firms has better connected consultants who help organizations navigate the transformative age by asking better questions to find answers to some of the world's toughest challenges, all to build a better working world for their people, clients, and communities. IT orchestration stories from CDW. Our research company set out to push boundaries, but their outdated technology was pushing back. So CDW orchestrated a streamlined connectivity solution using devices powered by Intel 8th generation V Pro processors. They deliver faster multitasking, improved battery life, and more storage, leading to increased performance. Streamlined productivity by Intel. IT orchestration by CDW. Learn more at cdw.com slash intel be great. CDW, people who get it. Jet fans, take your Sunday to another level with the Premier Jets pregame party at Club Prime Sport. Enjoy food and drinks, games and giveaways, plus live entertainment. Elevate your game day at MetLife Stadium with a Jets experience like no other. Go to primesport.com or call 877-527-2603 today to secure your spot at the official Jets pregame hospitality at Club Prime Sport. With Prime Sport, it's more than a game, it's an experience. Primesport.com. We haven't seen a superstar like this in years. You're not kidding, Bob. The people need to know about this standout. Introducing this year's most sought-after rookie, the M&T Bank Jets debit card. New on the scene, this fantastic plastic stands 2.125 inches tall and weighs a lean .2 ounces. This small but mighty paying machine is sure to be charging through checkout lines all season long. Hey, Jets fans, get your hands on the exclusive Jets debit card with Easy Choice Checking. It's free from a monthly maintenance fee and free from a minimum balance requirement, leaving you free from worry. You know, I have a feeling we're going to be seeing this powerhouse everywhere soon. No doubt about it. I want one of my team. So show your love for the Jets and save on fees today. Rush to any M&T Bank branch or mtb.com slash jets today. M&T Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. Other transaction and service fees, including insufficient funds and overdraft fees, may apply to this account. Member FDIC. Every time you close your laptop, 
but Corona gets its lime. And every time your to-do list is to do one less thing, but Corona gets its lime. Every time you press pause, every time you unwind or lose track of time, a Corona gets its lime. And every time your feet are up while the sun goes down, a Corona gets its lime. So drop a lime in and find your beach. Please drink responsibly. Corona Extra Beer imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. They couldn't play football without us. We built this stadium. You couldn't tailgate without us. We probably built the road that got you here. Most of all, we promote economic development. That means investments in infrastructure and construction to provide opportunities for developers, union contractors, and members of Operating Engineers Local 825. We're ELEC, the Engineers Labor Employer Cooperative. We build the infrastructure New Jersey and the Jets rely on. Advance your career at Centenary University's School of Professional Studies. With accelerated scheduling and competitive pricing, it's convenient for busy adults to earn an MBA, undergraduate degree, or certificate. Centenary graduates work in hot fields like social media marketing, criminal justice, data analytics, health administration, and sports management. At Centenary University, they're committed to your success. Learn more at sps.centenaryuniversity.edu. Back to throw is Allen, second down and 10. Looks right, throws one down the right sideline, up in the air, it's intercepted! Picked off by Tremaine Johnson, his second of the day, and it's going to be victory formation for the New York Jets with under a minute to go. Welcome back to Inside the Jets. We are broadcasting live from Vanderbilt Sports and Spirits inside the Wyndham Hamilton Park Hotel. Eric Allen alongside Eric Coleman. We got a double player guest segment tonight because Robbie Anderson joins us right now. And this segment is brought to you by M&T Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. One of yesterday's heroes, Robbie, four catches, 76 yards. Which was your favorite? Oh. Uh. Winning the game, even <laughs> I didn't have no game when it kept, but you know that catch at the end of the game was big. A touchdown too. The 37 yarder. Yeah. I asked you about it in the locker room. You said Sam Darnold couldn't have had better ball placement. You yeah. said that was great. But I talked to Shad Pennington about it today, Robbie. He said you ran a fantastic route because you stayed your ground. You never wavered as far as where you were because the cornerback was with you. Yeah. Uh, Tre'Davious White. Yeah. Yeah, I set them up, you know, he was playing off coverage, so, you know, I ran a lot of comebacks throughout the game, so I gave him a quick little hesitation, not the hands down, and ball was right there where it needed to be. Robbie, can you talk about that, the, 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 the touchdown catch? Mm. You know, Sam, he scrambled to the right, came back to the left. Uh, can you talk about what you what your initial route was and how you broke free uh, to catch that pass? Um, my initial route was on pass I caught earlier in the game in the red zone, like that little quick route. So I was heading towards that side of the field, then I saw him scramble, so I started running sideways. Then I ran up, and I peeked, <laughs> and I saw him coming toward me, so I just took another step the other way towards him, and he hit me on, you know what I'm saying? He put it on the money. Um, what do you think about your connection with Darnold and how it continues to develop now? I think it's growing, you know? Took a little time, you know, both of us had a, we were both missed a little bit of a couple games, but. I definitely think our connection is, is growing a lot. So, got to finish out these next three weeks and, you know, the future's bright, hopefully. How different is maybe the trajectory of the ball, especially on a long ball, the way Sam throws it compared to maybe the way Josh McCown is throwing it? Yeah, it's a little different. You know, at first it was a little, had to adjust to it a little bit, but I'm getting used to it now. Now, now Robbie, you know, I, I talked to you about this before. When you first came into the league, you were, you were a guy who was known as a, as a deep ball guy. Yeah. And you have turned into a complete receiver running intermediate routes, quick routes, still doing the deep ball. Can you talk about the things you've done to evolve as a receiver? Uh, you know, just learning, you know, understanding the game more, understanding that I, I don't want to be one-dimensional, you know. Great receivers aren't one-dimensional, you know. And just, you know, just – taking it as it comes. You know, I want to catch short routes and get the ball in my hands. I want to go deep. I want to get the ball every way possible, you know. Have you had to be patient this season? Because you've been dealing with an ankle injury, and I know a lot of people in the National Football League deal with injuries, yeah. but I, I know that they can be challenging at times. Yeah, yeah. This, this season, I had to be patient a lot, you know. Things didn't 
go so so much how last year I didn't get as much targets some games and stuff, but you know, that's how it goes. You just gotta make the most of the opportunities and you know, take it as it comes. What was it like in that winning locker room? You said, Hey, hey listen, I, I don't really have a favorite catch. I, I just have a favorite and that is winning. What was that feeling like when you guys exited the field knowing that you had secured victory? Man, that that was like, you know, one of the top top five feelings in the win since I've been here. Really? Yeah, it was big. You know, we, we've we been coming close to losing. You know, it's been tough. You know, that feeling that we had last, last night, was it was great. Um, Robbie, how do you guys build on this win? Uh, you know, you're coming in the fourth quarter. You know, la the last couple of games of the season, you were close last week. This this past game, you come up with the win. How do you continue that momentum? I think just living off that, you know, taking that feeling and Wanting to feel that again, you know, taking this momentum that we have right now, finishing strong and, you know, setting a standard for for us as a team to show that, you know, we're not going to lay down, you know, keep showing that passion. And, you know, at, when you play football, like how your off season is kind of dictated how your season is. So I think that we understand that as a team that we don't want to go into the off season with a bad feeling and as much regret as we will feel, setting things right for next year. What impresses you most about Darnold so far here early in his career? Um, his work ethic, you know, is very humble. You know, usually you probably think that guys come in, uh, like, drafted that high, maybe feel entitled, and, you know, he doesn't give you that, that vibe at all. You know, he works hard, you know, keep his head down, you know, handle himself like a pro. And what's your communication like with him as far as you know? A quarterback and a wide receiver, they're going to talk about certain yeah. things. I'm going to run my route this way, or maybe you're going to put the ball here as far as that is concerned. How, how does he go about that, and how do you go about that with him? Uh, he just lets me know what he sees and like what he expects throughout the week with certain things and what he's looking to do. And then, you know, now I'm more open, co opening up to him and letting him know, like, I know how he's going to play this, you know, just put it up, just trust me, you know. So I think that we built that trust factor. What changes for you? I asked T. Brooks about this, too. Short week now. Mm -hmm. Saturday game against the Houston Texans. Does that mean you got to speed up your preparations? Because you got one last day now. Yeah, but, you know, we've all played Saturday games. We played Thursday games. So, you know, it's just it, we don't got to wait as long to play. Now, can you talk about – I don't know how much you've seen of Houston. Mm -hmm. It's still early in the week. But can you talk about uh, some of the, the – the problems that they, they posed on your defense. You know, they're, they're the, one of the top defenses in the league, probably aggressive. Can you talk about uh, the challenges that they bring for the uh, Jets? I know it's going to be a big battle in the trenches. You know, that's where everything starts at, regardless of how good or bad a team might be. It starts at the trenches. So, you know, that's where it's going to start. And then, like, just like last, we're going to have to develop that run game and the skilled players. We're going to have to make our plays. So, Robbie, I want to ask you a little bit off the field. We got about uh, – I wish we had a little bit more time, but uh, just in about a minute or so, how do you go about your style as far as picking the selections, whatever you're wearing, maybe casual, or even going on a plane, business, whatever? How do you go about it? Um, it kind of depends, you know, but the vibe, you know, that I'm, that, that I'm in, the weather, the climate, you know, and then just, like, certain things that's out there, you know, I like to kind of stay up to date with what's new, things like that. So I just try and get a feel for what I'm, what, what, how I'm feeling exactly, what's out there to choose from. And I don't like to keep it, like, you know, too generic and, and similar. I like to keep, keep the look different, you know. Just like his play, he does not keep it generic as far as the wardrobe was, is concerned. Hey, listen, great game yesterday against the Buffalo Bills. Uh, Continue to success to you. And we will be right back on Inside the Jets. We haven't seen a superstar like this in years. You're not kidding, Bob. The people need to know about this standout. Introducing this year's most sought-after rookie, the M&T Bank Jets debit card. New on the scene, this fantastic plastic stands 2.125 inches tall and weighs a lean .2 ounces. This small but mighty paying machine is sure to be charging through checkout lines all season long. Hey, Jets fans, get your hands on the exclusive Jets debit card with Easy Choice Checking. It's free from a monthly maintenance fee and free from a minimum balance requirement, leaving you free from worry. You know, I have a feeling we're going to be seeing this powerhouse everywhere soon. No doubt about it. I want one on my team. So show your love for the Jets and save on fees today. Rush to any M&T Bank branch or mtb.com slash Jets today. 
M&T Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. Other transaction and service fees, including insufficient funds and overdraft fees, may apply to this account. Member FDIC. Okay, game time, boys. Coach, where are my pads? Pads? No time for that now. But, Coach. Go on now. Get out there. Oh. Hut, hut, hike. The right protection always matters at the line and for your business. Selective Insurance knows what businesses like yours need to stay safe and win. Visit Selective.com to find an agent near you. Ernst & Young LLP is proud to be the exclusive professional business and accounting services sponsor of the New York Jets and MetLife Stadium. Teaming with them as the official sponsor of the EY Coaches Club. As a global leader in assurance, tax, transaction, and advisory services, the global network of EY firms has better connected consultants who help organizations navigate the transformative age by asking better questions to find answers to some of the world's toughest challenges, all to build a better working world for their people, clients, and communities. Hi, football fans. This is Director Jared Maples with the New Jersey Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness. It's our mission to protect New Jersey with our federal, state, and local partners. Of course, nobody knows our communities better than the people who live there. That's where you can help. If you see something that you suspect is out of the ordinary, report it. Together, we can keep our state safe. Remember, if you see something, say something. To learn more about what to look for, visit njhomelandsecurity.gov. Hey, Jets fans, New Jersey Motor Vehicle Chief Administrator Sue Fulton here to welcome you back for a brand new season of action-packed NFL football and to warn you about the dangers of texting while driving. Sure, fines and penalties are steep, but did you know you're also 23 times more likely to get into an accident if you text and drive? Or that taking your eyes off the road for just five seconds at highway speeds is like traveling the length of a football field blindfolded? That's not a winning drive, Jets fans. Learn more at JustDrive.com. Darnold again out of the shotgun, drops the throw, looks right, throws a bomb down the right sideline for Robbie Anderson, drops it in, complete, inside the 10-yard line. Robbie Anderson toe taps out of bounds at the Bills' 5-yard line. What a throw from Darnold. Welcome back to Inside the Jets. Remember, Jets fans, you can stream Inside the Jets live through the Jets app, presented by M&T Bank. Go to the App Store or Google Play now and search official New York Jets. Eric Allen and Eric Coleman here at Vanderbilt Sports and Spirits inside the Wyndham Hamilton Park Hotel. Uh, we got rocking and rolling with T. Brooks tonight, Terrence Brooks, Jet Safety, Robbie Start Anderson. Off early today. Yes, that's right. Robbie Anderson, who uh, really came up big for his rookie quarterback late against the Buffalo Bills, which was a very positive sign. Now, E, what did you think about Darnold and his his performance, especially in the second half? Jets didn't have a lot of plays in the first half. Didn't really establish too much of a rhythm there early on. But when plays were needed to be made late, Sam Darnold was clutch. I loved it. I love what I saw out of Sam in the second half. You know, he, he showed a lot of fight, showed a lot of moxie. You know, where he may have made a mistake, he came back, didn't let, didn't let that affect the next play you know you, you saw when he threw the interception running to his right he came back a couple of series later running to his left full speed throws across his body and throws a strike to Robbie Anderson and, and that was an amazing pass he threw it over the top of a defender between two on the run I mean he, he showed a lot of signs of being a star in this league and I'm, I'm excited to continue to watch him grow yeah and that's the thing that bothers me um, I know fans want to get better and they look at the draft and say we want to get a top draft pick. We're not going to the playoffs this year. You cannot tell me how insignificant it is for a quarterback in his rookie season to go through a two-minute situation when the game is in his hands, and you're going to tell me that doesn't matter. I don't buy that. It is so important that Sam Darnold experiences these things down the stretch. That's why I was concerned he went out with a foot injury after the third play. I'm like, oh, my God, is Darnold out for the rest of the year? Because you want to see this guy experience as much as he can for the rest of the 2018 season. And that has nothing to do with the draft. Do you know why a lot of people are concerned about 
where they're going to be picking in the draft? It's because they don't have a quarterback. The New York Jets think they have their quarterback. And oh, by the way, he's 21 years old. And oh, by the way, he had two touchdown drives in the decisive quarter against the Buffalo Bills in a cold environment when a lot of people would say, hey, Sam Darnold, he's from Southern California. He played at USC. It's probably a little too cold for him. And that was against the NFL's number one pass defense. Yeah, it, it was great to see Sam uh, get those reps. You know, the, these last couple of games are going to be extremely valuable for Sam Darnold and the rest of the team. Uh, the only way you learn how to win is by going out there and executing and, and doing it. You know, and you saw that the special teams came through with some big plays. The defense came up with stops when they needed to. And offensively, like you mentioned, Sam Darnold led those two-minute drills. He threw that, that pass down the sidelines when everyone, you know, they could have settled for, for, for less. You know, I, I love to see that. Uh, and the more that Sam makes those throws, uh, shows that toughness and that grit, the more the coaches can, can trust him to make big plays, and you'll start seeing more and more big plays. It, it's all about trust right now. Sam's getting that experience, and, and I think that layoff, that three games, yeah. really helped him develop as a quarterback. You know, getting to sit back and watch from, out, from outside in, watch Josh McCown uh, make mistakes, make, watch him make big plays, watch how defenses attack you. I think that helps a quarterback, and, and you can see where it helps Sam. What about the players, though? The guys in the room – they see him every day, and now they can say, you know what? I was with him in the huddle in Buffalo, and he let us down the field to victory. Or the defensive guys can say, he was composed. He was even keel. His temperament never changed in a situation like that. That has to make you feel good as a teammate that this is going to be our guy. Yeah, and it's infectious to see your leader go out there and fighting as hard as he is when, you know, for all intents and purposes, you know, they're not making the playoffs. No. So these games don't really count. You know what? My leader's out there busting his butt. Jamal's out there busting his butt. We're going to follow these guys and continue to grow as a team because that's, it's, very, it's imperative for this team to continue to get better, continue to fight. You know, it's not going at the speed that everyone on the outside wants it to. I'm sure the Jets wish they could have a couple of games sure. back. But they're continuing to show progress and different guys are stepping up each week, and, and that's what you love to see. What do you think about chapter – what did you think about chapter one of the rivalry that we think is on the way with Sam Darnold leading the New York Jets and Josh Allen leading the Buffalo Bills? It, it was exciting, you know, and it was, a, it was a small glimpse of what the future holds. You know, two guys going, going back and forth with one, with one another, young, you know, they have a lot to go. You know, they, they both showed signs of, of greatness, you know, Josh Allen threw some great passes. He made some awesome runs, you know, running for 101 yards. But Sam Darnold showed that moxie at the end of the game. And, and I think that this battle, this rivalry, is, is going to get even bigger. You know, and, and if you're a Jets fan, if you're a fan of football, you have to be excited what the future holds. Jermaine Johnson is going to be part of your future, too. And I know he's an older veteran, but he just came over in the offseason. And he got off to a slow start, and that quad injury really hampered him in the middle stages of the season. But you got to be encouraged when a guy finds the football three times in two weeks. Yeah, you know, and, that, and that's what he, that he signed up for. You know, big-time players making big-time plays, uh, that's what the Jets are going to need. They're going to need their stars to come through and make those big plays. And Tremaine has, has done a great job all year uh, of playing. You know, when he's healthy, he's one of the best corners in the league. Yes, he's going to give up a play. You know, People always – people – it's tough. It's a tough standard when you have Darrell Rivas, as, who's been in your, your organization, and Rivas Island. I think Jets fans, we got spoiled by watching Darrell Rivas go down there and shut down receivers and not allow a catch on the receiver. That, that's a rare player. That's a Hall of Fame career. Sure. And, and it's tough to get those type of players. But I think Tremaine is a player who is going to be great for this team. He's going to continue to, to lead the defense and make big plays and be that corner that the Jets can rely well, on. Well, he's got something you can't teach in the National Football League. Number one is he's a monster. He's a big cornerback. And that means it's a physical presence on the back end that you can put outside the numbers. The other thing that I like that he brings to the table he is a confident player. Yeah, you, and you have to be. You, know, you have to be confident when you're playing out there on the island. It's you against the world. Your, your confidence can't waver because you got beat for a touchdown or, or something happened that you didn't want to happen. At cornerback, you have to be 
confident the entire game or you're, you're going to lose. You're going to lose your one-on-one -on -one matchups. And I love how his confidence resonates yeah. in that secondary. You can see it in Jamal. You can see it throughout, you know, Buster. It, it, it's great to have a group with that much confidence because when you're playing in the secondary, when you make a mistake, it's the world against you. You have to have that chemistry with one another to depend on each other to know I got your back no matter what happens in this game. Unfortunately, Isaiah Crowell goes down early against the Bills. He was dealing with a toe injury, went out there in the first quarter. But what did you think about Eli McGuire's performance? He popped one in the second half. And I'll tell you what, that fourth and one run, nice job blocking up front by the Jets against what Chad Pennington would say was a 6-2 front from the Buffalo Bills there at the goal line. But a lot of young running backs, he, you know this, a guy who's been in those goal line situations, they wouldn't have remained patient. Yeah. They would have went inside there, and it wasn't there. He remained patient, waited for his blockers, and then eventually got over that goal line. Yeah, that, that was a fantastic run by, by Eli. Great job by the big fellas up front, getting a hat for a hat, giving him a lane to run. And, and Eli showed a lot of patience he showed a lot of maturity on that run because like you said a lot of young guys would be anxious to get across the goal line you know what I'm going to try to run through them how about you let the play develop let everyone get a hat for a hat find a lane for yourself cut through and score the game winning touchdown that's a big time play uh, tough break for the Jets Dar uh, Darren Lee suspended for the final four games uh, the 2018 season I know he's disappointed I know Todd Bowles expressed his disappointment but with that being said, we'll talk about D. Lee here in a minute on the other side of this commercial break. I want to ask you about Neville Hewitt coming in there. He starts. He was all over the place. He had eight tackles yesterday, which tied for the team lead. Yeah, I mean, listen, next man up mentality. You talk about it in, in this group. Is, is full of guys who prepare like starters. They're all mature beyond their years. And when their number's called, you've seen guys step up. You, you see in the secondary with, with Daryl Roberts playing safety. You know, you, you saw it, you know, all over the field. When, when guys go down, a lot of the younger guys will step up and, and make those plays. And that's what it's about, gaining that experience, getting that depth, and, and getting those repetitions. So when something like this happens, everyone's prepared and you don't miss a beat. Yeah, Hewitt came on in the starting lineup. He played very well. Kevin Pierre-Lewis also did a couple things defensively. He's been a special teams uh, fixture for the Jets in 2018. We are going to take a break, and we'll be right back on Inside the Jets. Ernst & Young LLP is proud to be the exclusive professional business and accounting services sponsor of the New York Jets and MetLife Stadium. Teaming with them as the official sponsor of the EY Coaches Club. As a global leader in assurance, tax, transaction, and advisory services, the global network of EY firms has better connected consultants who help organizations navigate the transformative age by asking better questions to find answers to some of the world's toughest challenges, all to build a better working world for their people, clients, and communities. As a young boy, Gavin loved playing football. He lived and breathed it, wanted to go pro. Why he'd spent hours upon hours just practicing his touchdown dances. And one day, while getting fitted for bifocals, he realized he was never much good at throwing, or running, or catching, or even kicking. Yeah, Gavin's chances of playing pro football were looking like fourth and long. Very long. But he did hear how Geico could save him money on car insurance. So he switched and saved. Then he did kind of a touchdown dance. At least he was still good at that. Bet online, just like in a casino anywhere in New Jersey with 888. Yes, casino games, live dealer, and more at 888.com. It's fun, fun, fun at 888. So bet, bet, bet now. 888 is a proud sponsor of the J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets. 888 encourages responsible gaming. Players must be 21 or older to play and in the state of New Jersey. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. We haven't seen a superstar like this in years. You're not kidding, Bob. The people need to know about this standout. Introducing this year's most sought-after rookie, the M&T Bank Jets debit card. New on the scene, this fantastic plastic stands 2.125 inches tall and weighs a lean .2 ounces. This small but mighty paying machine is sure to be charging through checkout lines all season long. Hey, Jets fans, get your hands on the exclusive Jets debit card with easy choice checking. It's free from a monthly maintenance fee and free from a minimum balance requirement. 
leaving you free from worry. You know, I have a feeling we're going to be seeing this powerhouse everywhere soon. No doubt about it. I want one of my team. So show your love for the Jets and save on fees today. Rush to any M&T Bank branch or mtb.com slash jets today. M&T Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. Other transaction and service fees, including insufficient funds and overdraft fees, may apply to this account. Member FDIC. Cyber attack, data breach, malware, botnets. Think your business is immune? It's not. Malware is alive and well on most corporate networks. So you need active malware detection. You need CDW. CDW has a complimentary service called Threat Check. It passively monitors your network to detect malicious traffic and other risks. CDW's security experts will then analyze and explain the results and provide security recommendations. Learn more at cdw.com slash threat check. CDW, people who get it. They couldn't play football without us. We built this stadium. You couldn't tailgate without us. We probably built the road that got you here. Most of all, we promote economic development. That means investments in infrastructure and construction to provide opportunities for developers, union contractors, and members of Operating Engineers Local 825. We're ELEC, the Engineers Labor Employer Cooperative. We build the infrastructure New Jersey and the Jets rely on. Jet fans, take your Sunday to another level with the Premier Jets pregame party at Club Prime Sport. Enjoy food and drinks, games and giveaways, plus live entertainment. Elevate your game day at MetLife Stadium with a Jets experience like no other. Go to primesport.com or call 877-527-2603 today to secure your spot at the official Jets pregame hospitality at Club Prime Sport. With Prime Sport, it's more than a game, it's an experience. Primesport.com. This will be a 49-yard field goal attempt from the left hash for Hauschka to try and tack on three more for Buffalo at the break. Matt Dar, the punter, will hold. The snap clean. The placement down. The kick is blocked. It falls back to about the 15-yard line, picked up by Rontez Miles. He's going to try and run it back. He gets hit, lost the football, and now it's scooped up by Terrence Brooks. Brooks will run right. He breaks a tackle, and he's down at the 24-yard line. Welcome back to Inside the Jets. The Jets reward members, don't forget to enter the code SNOWFLAKE in your Jets rewards portal during the show to earn 100 points. That is SNOWFLAKE. Eric Allen and Eric Coleman here we are at Vanderbilt Sports and Spirits inside the Wyndham Hamilton Park Hotel. So the Jets move to 4-9. and nine. The challenge will be a little bit tougher this week. No disrespect to the Buffalo Bills, but they aren't, are not at the level of the Houston Texans right now. The Texans just had a nine-game winning streak snapped by the Indianapolis Colts. You know, they're going to be probably playing playoff football and they're going to look to get on back to the winning side of things here at MetLife Stadium on Sunday. Yeah, you know, the Jets are playing a complete football team in the Houston Texans. I mean, you look offensively. Everyone talks about their defense. But offensively, Lamar Miller is closing in on 1,000 yards rushing. Uh, Deshaun Watson is a prolific quarterback who can run the ball. He can throw it. DeAndre Hopkins one of the best receivers in the NFL uh, on the offensive side of the ball. So, And then on defense, you got J.J. Watt, Whitney Merciless, Jadavian Clowney. Yep. Kareem Jackson in the secondary, they have a ton of talent on this team, and it's going to be a big-time challenge for the Jets. Uh, as a guy who played safety in the National Football League, what do you think about Hopkins? Where would you rate him in 2018? Ooh, that, that's tough. You know, because he's right there in the top ten in receiving yep. as far as yards. But when you look at when you watch the way he plays, he's one of the most dangerous receivers in the league he's got uh, great hands he's man. got amazing hands he's got after the catch he does a great job of making defenders miss and he's a one of those receivers that strikes a lot of fear into a defense we mentioned Tremaine Johnson before mm -hmm. I would imagine Tremaine Johnson is going to be matched up with Hopkins this before. is why you pay him the big bucks yeah. this is why you acquire a Tremaine Johnson to defend a you know a Deshaun I mean a DeAndre Hopkins some of the elite receivers in the league and no he's not going to keep him catchless no of course but, not. but he should be able to contain him keep him from limiting it is big plays, and, and that should help the defense a lot. On the other side of the spectrum, they made an interesting trade this year because they were dealing with some injuries the Texans did. Demarius Thomas, longtime Denver Bronco, 
Now he's playing across the way. So these are big receivers on the outside for Deshaun Watson. Yeah, there, there's a ton of weapons uh, at Deshaun Watson's disposal. You know, Demarius Thomas is a longtime Denver Bronco, one of their all-time greats, lining up on the opposite side of DeAndre Hopkins makes it tough to double-team, you know, because there, there's a ton of mismatch situations. But I think the Jets are built for, for games like this. Really? They have a ton of talent out there. If Claiborne's healthy and he can go back out there, Buster Screen, back healthy. These are guys who can compete against these big receivers and, and play some good football. But it's all going to come down. To can the big fellas up front get pressure? Can they contain Deshaun Watson? And ultimately, can they stop the run? Because that's going to be the, 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 the deciding factor in this game, stopping that run, because you limit what Texas can do if you, if you stop the run. Would you describe Josh Allen, who the Jets just saw, as a thrower who is also a runner, an athlete, but Deshaun Watson as a passer who can run? Yeah, Deshaun Watson definitely is a passer who can run. And, and he... He can run it well. You know, he, he's very agile. He can make you miss if, if need be. But, but, uh, but he's going to stay in that pocket, though. Yeah, he's going to try to stay in the pocket as long as he can. But if that play breaks down, everybody better get their eyes back to the quarterback because he can run. Uh, you know, Josh Allen's a guy who's a long strider. Who, you know, he's, once he gets to the open field, he's going to take what the defense gives him and then get down. Deshaun Watson can make you miss. So he makes you dangerous. And, uh, and he's a, a, a great passer, a great thrower on the run. Uh, very accurate when he's on the run. So, you know, the defense is going to have a, a great job. But the Jets' defense is, re is ready for a game like this. You know, they have the skill players. They have the, the defensive linemen, the, the secondary. It's going to be a great matchup. I'm excited for it. What about offensively? What does Darnold have to do against uh, this front that you just mentioned? J.J. Watt, as good as anybody who's mm -hmm. playing defense in the National Football League. I think he's got 12 and a half sacks this year. And you mentioned Jadavia and Cloudy. He deals with injuries sometimes, but a guy, he's explosive off the edge. You mentioned Merciless. The sack numbers aren't there, mm -hmm. but you have to account for him when he's on the field. I got to imagine you got to have some kind of balance, and maybe you got to use the backs out of the backfield in terms of being outlets for Darnold this week. Yeah, you're going to need uh, you know, a ton of outlets. They're going to have to stay in and chip on those, on those pass rushers. But I think when you run the football well, it neutralizes what you can do as a pass rusher. You know, we, we talked to Henry Anderson earlier in the year, and he talked about the importance of, of getting off on that run, uh, getting off on the pass game. When, when, when you have a lead, when those D linemen can pin their ears back and get after the pass rusher, that's what a D lineman wants. That's what they thrive on. If you can run the ball, slow them down on their, on, on their initial burst, it helps out those offensive linemen and gives them an opportunity to protect and keep them in front of them. But J.J. Watt poses a problem. He's so big and long. You know, he can get up and Well, that's what I was just going to ask you. What makes him so special? His, his motor is nonstop. We know that. And he's a big dude. And you just talked about his length. But what takes him to another level? What takes him to another level is, you know, once, he's, once he is blocked in the, passing, in the pass rush, when, he, when his initial move gets blocked, he has the awareness to keep his eyes on the quarterback, and he has a, that long wingspan. He gets his hands up. He knocks down more passes probably than any defensive lineman in the league. So he does a great job of converting that pass rush to, to knocking down passes, and he has a ton of range for a big fellow. Uh, we mentioned before Darren Lee, a tough break for him. What kind of advice would you give him if you had an opportunity to get his ear as now his season has come to an end, unfortunately? Learn from your mistakes. Yeah. You know, that, that, that the most important part of, of making a mistake is learning from it and not repeating it, uh, becoming a better person for that. You know, I, I think that he's definitely disappointed that he's seeing his teammates, letting his teammates down, going out there without him. He's a, he's a player that everyone depends on. Um, and it hurts, and it should hurt him. You know, and, and hopefully it motivates him to become a better player, a better teammate, and, and, help, and maybe it's going to help this team get better and learn how to play without him, learn how, to, how important he is to the team. And, and I think it's important that it's a, it's a learning lesson for the rest of the guys. Learn from his mistake. Don't make the mistake yourself. Learn from someone else's mistake. Uh, three interceptions this year that was tied for the NFL high amongst linebackers, and he was second on this team in terms of tackles. And we talked about Neville Hewitt before. Did a fine job starting alongside Avery Williamson against the Buffalo Bills. So those are the kinds of things that you want to see down the stretch. We had Terrence Brooks on to start the show. The Jets special teams has just been, have been unbelievable. I mean, Brant Boyer, wow. Just consistently for 13 games now. Yeah, they've done a, a great job. 
executing in all phases of the special teams game. You know, the field goal kicker, Myers. Jason Myers, yep. He, he better be in the Pro Bowl. I mean, because he's hit some, some long shots. Uh, he's done a great job on kickoffs. Uh, you, you look at Lachlan, done a great job of punting the ball. Uh, the, the coverage units have done a great job. And that kickoff return, that, that return game ha has propelled the Jets and helped out, put a, a lot of points on the board, helped Sam Darnold in that offense, uh, getting some great field position. But that's the thing with Andre Roberts that separates him uh, from the rest of the returners when we're talking about Pro Bowl, the Pro Bowl, and you can still uh, vote for the Pro Bowl, I'm pretty sure, is that he's getting it done not only as a kick returner, he's getting it done as a punt returner. You look at the league numbers. So um, he should be in the Pro Bowl. Jason Myers should be in the Pro Bowl, and Jamal Adams is definitely going to the Pro Bowl. We know that's happening. But the Jets are going to try to extend a win streak now, and hopefully they can get by the Houston Texans. But Eric Coleman and I will be back here next week on Inside the Jets. We haven't seen a superstar like this in years. You're not kidding, Bob. The people need to know about this standout. Introducing this year's most sought-after rookie, the M&T Bank Jets.